but there's other work for survival that you do. When you're poor, when you poor forever, I'm not talking about when you're broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when you're broke, right. you have no money today, but you don't have the prospect of not having any forever. You expect to get some. Mm -hmm. But when you're poor, you don't ever expect to get some. And immediately what you're doing is you're evaluating everything you do from the point of view of the money you don't have. Mm -hmm. It guides your life. It makes all your decisions. It determines your relationships. It's everything about you, how you live, where you live, whom you live with, and the rest. And the basic income is leaving out so many of the people of whom that, that is the problem. You know, so many of us who have almost nothing are not talked about and it's very usually also very much part of societies where there is some money. Whereas most of us live in societies where there isn't any money around us. I mean, there just isn't any money around us. You know, there's not something you can... I mean, you're not even in a position to watch television in the shops, from the windows of the shops that carry that <coughs> sell them. You know, there's just nothing there. And I think that we have really, all of us, suffered greatly from that division between those of us who have something and those of us who have less than something. And you, everything we do must address this, you know. On the other hand, the work that the Living Wage Campaign is doing and the basic income is talking about doing is tremendously important and help and really reinforces all of us who are making our demands on capital. It's a real power for us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the only way to solve the difficulties is to work together and to acknowledge the value of the demands that each of us is making, the value to the other. Uh, I feel that that's really important also. Yeah, and also just uh, another point on that. I mean, the thing is, a, ba a basic income doesn't acknowledge that you're making a contribution. You know, it's a bit like, okay, you have a right to be alive, which is, look, which is very important because right now we don't have a right to life. That's really. right. So to mm -hmm. have a right to life is a major, major, major step. I'm not for any, in any way trying to say that it isn't. Yeah, they, they, they limit the right to life to the unborn. Yeah, Once you're right. born, yeah. you can go to they the have, wall, yeah. that's it. But it still doesn't oh, yeah. acknowledge Do that we're here. making a contribution, mm -hmm. you know, especially women, that we're making a massive contribution that to, you know, to produce and reproduce all the human beings in the world, Either. you know, should be recognized as a major contribution that you're making to the world, as opposed to somehow it's just nothing, you know. And the basic income doesn't do that, and it should really, you know, we should really combine the two so that we have the, the recognition of our contribution, which means that then you're looking at economics in a completely different way, as well as everybody's right to life. That's it. I love, we'd love to hear your comments on the petition or anything else that we've said. Anybody, including the people on Skype, go on mute. <laughs> Don't forget to go off mute. You want to say something? So, with the petition, it's an international petition. Is there a designated time for the petition to be delivered to any Pacific person? That was the question you got, right, Alicia? Well, yes, is, from San Francisco. There is, but, there is, but on the 24th of October, at the moment, in addition to petitioning, which we have been doing like on the high street, we've been petitioning and got very That's good That's on the response. main road. Is that what you call it here, the main road, the high street? Is it the high street? Yeah. Main, main street. Main street. Yeah. The main street? Main street. Okay. If or you put a stall out there, you know, where people go shopping or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and we've had a very good response. People really stop and want to sign and many of them are either carers for some people or they tell you how hard their mothers mm. work or whatever. They just generally are very sympathetic. So we've been doing that but we also are trying to get endorsements for the petition from organizations mm. and we have a whole set of endorsers already. Are they listed here? We, they're on the yeah. website. We should really have a, yeah, a list of endorsers. I was because a lot of them are from the U.S., aren't they? Because there's quite a lot of people who have endorsed organizations of veterans for peace. I can't really think of them at the moment, but we have quite a lot of endorsers. So that's it. Military family. So we have a. We want to have as many organizations as, as possible to sign on. And on the 24th of October, we want to kind of relaunch the petition, if you like, with all the endorsers, etc., because it's the, it's the anniversary, the 40th anniversary of a, of a strike, the general strike of women in Iceland, mm -hmm. which hardly anybody knows anything about, but it did happen in 1975, and the Wages for Housework campaign uh, did what it could to let people know about it and used it in a film that was that Selma and some other people made at the time. And the fact is that women, they called it a day off, but they took the day off and the whole country was mm -hmm. brought to a halt. As you can imagine, if women are doing no work for a day. And the majority of women went into the main square in, what's the name of the capital? Right, right, right. Yeah. And it's, it was just amazing that it is, I can't remember how many thousands of women, but it was really massive. So we wanted to mark it and kind of relaunch the petition with all the endorsements and however many signatures we have then. And then we'll have to decide, you know, what to do, where to deliver it, and I think each country may want to do something different, or we may decide to do it all on the same day. It's really up for grabs. Yeah, because this was a question she got when she was trying to circulate it, like, well, what are they really going to be doing with it? Is it just an exercise in futility? I mean, what is the purpose? And are you actually going to... Do it. And I think part of the response, too, is that, you know, when we got a decision at the United Nations, you might a you copy of the that, decision. Um, in the United Nations in 1995, it was really a 10-year effort, the entire UN decade yeah. for women, building up to getting governments to agree to measure and value unremunerated, unwaged work and include its value, uh, unwaged work on the land in the community, in the home on the land and in the community, mm -hmm. and include that value in economic statistics. So we've got 1,500 non-governmental organizations signing that. That's huge. I overheard Hillary Clinton the other day saying, and we got 200 NGOs to sign. I was like, you, you with all of your millions, got 200. We, with all of our little nothing, you know, women's center, got 1,500. I mean, it was yeah. really the biggest show of support for anything. And we did get that, and some countries are doing it. So, and, and there were petitions that led up to that. In fact, there was a major petition that we circulated that yeah, we led up to that. that. So we do a aim to do something. As Nina said, it was easier when we had the rise in the Work Act that we're a piece of, piece of legislation mm -hmm. you're actually going for. But it's still, it can lead to legislation, it can lead to all kinds of things. Yeah, but also at the moment it's kind of breaking new ground, yeah, because the mm -hmm. whole idea of mothers and other carers, first of all, that mothers are carers is already a major mm -hmm. step, because carers who are generally paid, not necessarily, but many carers are paid, don't necessarily consider mothers to be carers. Mm -hmm you know, to be doing caring work. So to bring those two sectors together is already major. And the idea that both should get a living wage, that the, that your contribution is not just to your family, but it's to society as a whole, mm -hmm. and should be acknowledged financially yeah. as such, it's, it's really a major step. And so it's not something that you're just going to do a petition, deliver it, and move mm -hmm. on. You know, it's like it, it just... It's like people have to rethink, you know, the whole... Yeah, the whole thing. So it's what he's trying to do at the moment. Um, I have a question for. Do you want to do you, I think Asante had her hand oh, up. Sorry. You better chair, Phoebe. Yeah, I, I didn't see him. Okay, right, go ahead. And then Asante. Um, I guess I had a question, not necessarily about the petition itself, but um, the relationship between um, uh, wages for house 
wives and housework. basic housework, I'm sorry, um, and the basic minimum income in 15 now because presumably the demand for a $15 minimum wage falls short of even the basic minimum income. Um, obviously, you know, many of us in 15 now are socialists, so we see that as a transitional demand and an entry point into conversations where people are kind of transforming their ideas of what our society would look like. It's like a first step, not an end goal. But I'm just wondering, um, I see no reason why we couldn't integrate rhetoric and language around wages for housework. And at least, I think it's a really useful conversation point, like on the doors and on the streets. And, you know, there have been more and more socialist candidates running for city council and for the state legislature in the U.S. I mean, not probably compared to other countries, but, you know, it might be something that we could take up um, as a national demand in socialist alternative. I don't know. I'm just thinking offhand. It would be an interesting conversation to have. Yeah. Well, our minds are open. Yeah. yeah. Look, we... Um, I, wa I want to say something more general mm -hmm. about why our minds are open. Yeah. We do not exist as the Wages for Housework campaign or the Global Women's Strike, which it coordinates to lead any particular section of the movement. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we seek to be a point of reference for the movement. Mm -hmm which begins, you can begin anywhere, which begins with women and which takes up the issues, the way the whole society is organized mm -hmm. from the point of view of women's exploitation. Mm -hmm. But we are connect, we want to connect with everybody. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't want to link with everybody. I want to make the distinction between mm -hmm. those two. Mm -hmm. We are drawing out a connection because we belong together. And we have to find our job as a movement, building a movement, is to find the way we are connected and pull that out and make that visible and work on that. And there is a basic connection which we from the very beginning, and I was there at the beginning, mm -hmm. that we at the very beginning made between waged and unwaged work. Mm -hmm. We never saw the unwaged work as disconnected from the waged work. We always knew that they tried to use us as scabs if we don't have money, and they tried to use us as exploiters if we have one penny more than somebody else. Mm -hmm. They have divided us internationally, they have divided us within the family, they have divided us among the races, they have divided us among the ages. They have divided us between disabilities and non-disabilities, although there's nobody with a non-disability, really. But these divisions are imposed on us and imposed on the way that we are organized. We have to throw that off. And the only way to throw that off and not just say, well, we'll unite, because it won't happen. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of experience on being divided, and we know that if people make their own case from their own position, if each of us does that in each of our sectors and communities, that's the basis on which we will come together. Mm -hmm. You know, if women make the case that we're entitled mm -hmm. to a wage and to every support and resource that the society can offer because we are doing the basic work of making the human race. Mm -hmm. That doesn't cut us off from waged workers. That says we make waged workers and we don't uh -huh. like to make waged workers. We like to make people, but we don't like to make slaves. Wage slaves or otherwise, you know. And, you know, it opens the way. It, and it, we make we believe doing things in an open way like this, mm -hmm. when we're not interested in power for ourselves, but power for all of us mm -hmm. against the forces of repression which we live under in every society, doing it that way, we make power for each other as well as for ourselves. 
and that's how we feel. Yeah. That, I mean, that's why I was happy to hear that you, yeah. where you were coming from, because this is our chance to meet. This yeah. is our chance to see yeah. how we can work together, not change, yeah. adjust, perhaps, incorporate, mm -hmm. but not lose our focus on behalf of another focus, because fundamentally our focus is the same, and we have to work out how to find the sameness in our focus. Is that, is, yeah, is that yeah. a reasonable yeah. way to put it? Yeah. yeah. Um, just real quickly, um, in terms of endorsers, has anyone approached the Black Lives Matter movement for an endorsement? Uh, yes. Yeah. Already yeah, have? Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. Absolutely. We're going yeah. to Ferguson. Alicia Garza? We're going to Ferguson on Sunday and we'll raise it there. But have you specifically spoken no, to... No, we haven't and you'll help us. Yeah, but okay. my, I don't know who Margaret has been in touch with. But we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Somebody okay. saying something. Yeah, yeah. No. No. Well, the reason yeah. why I mention that is because uh, Alicia Garza, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter movement, also works for a group, I don't remember the name, but it has something to do with domestic workers. And one of the members of that group wrote a book. It's an Asian sister who just wrote a book that's been getting a lot of acclaim. I can't yeah. pronounce her name, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I do. And you've met, you've met her. Aju Poo yes. something. Yes. You know, oh, Aju Poo? Yeah, the a domestic workers woman. A domestic Aj workers union something in California. Yeah. You mean Mariana? No. no. Aju Poo something. something. Oh, I see. We'll yeah. find it later. Yeah. We'll find it later. But um, that connection. Uh, may be helpful. Also, to um, is this um, you approach anyone for some of these health care, home health care worker groups? Um, Pat, did just Pat, you did. Um, uh, yeah. Well, uh, we've been. Um, well, actually, we're just beginning to make some of this connection. I'm sorry that some of those people didn't come today, but we're hoping that at least it's on the. You know, it's been put out, and next time we'll get more of a response. But. So we didn't we didn't have any local groups that we know of that that we work with that we, well it's unions we did have this home care workers union we approached and um, uh, so you know that's something that we want to continue to work on and and um, and see you know and I mean and, and I think you know I think that's important I mean if I unless I, if there's any more that you wanted to say I want to add welfare mothers into the discussion oh, absolutely mm -hmm. that's really important please go on with that. Right, well, you know, maybe you and I can talk later. Um, some home health care workers had a rally at my church a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they were brought together by SEIU 32BJ. Okay. Um, the home health care workers tend to be mostly women, a great number of them immigrant, mm -hmm. um, and some of their children also getting harassed by the police. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we can talk about that. I don't know where they are with that, but they had a rally at my church about a month ago, so maybe we can talk about that later too. Yeah. Can I just say that what you said is really one thing that you, everything you said was important, obviously, but one thing that you said was really striking because there must be a constant way in which those of us who are fighting for one thing mm -hmm. are able to draw resources for other struggles that we're involved in. If you're an immigrant and you have a low wage, you want more wages, you have to deal with your immigration status, you have to deal with your son being molested or mm -hmm. being, mm -hmm. being shot mm -hmm. or beaten up by the police, you have to deal with the question of housing, you know, there are a whole set of issues, and in our experience at the women's centers, not only, but I'm speaking from London, because there are a number of organizations based at the center, they come together for the needs of any individual or community that comes to work in self-help with us. We don't help anybody. Mm -hmm. We don't. We're against it. We work with Hi, people for them to be helped. I didn't want to cut you off. Uh, no, no. I just wanted to make that point, but I didn't want to cut you off the matter because the welfare struggle, we don't want to supersede it or cross no. it out no. or push it aside. The welfare women are part of this struggle because welfare has always been 
a struggle for a, a wage for women. Yes. No, no, no. Okay, so somebody is trying to uh, say something on Skype. Is somebody okay. trying to say something on Skype? Yeah, this is Joyce jumping in from Joyce, can you can you speak up a little louder? Let me your, let me turn up the volume because you're a little hard to hear. Go Hi, ahead. this is Joyce jumping in from South Welfare. Okay. I just wanted to say I enjoyed being on the call with you guys. I um, gathered a lot of information from what you guys are doing with the movement. And um, we're going to have to wrap up now because we actually have another meeting that's scheduled that we're going to have to go into. But I'm sure if you keep our executive director, Ms. Collette, abreast of the times that you're meeting, Collette, she will yeah, um, let us know on a need-to-know basis and we will be available. That's great. Great. And I understand that some of you may be joining us tomorrow, possibly for the discussion on how to do, how to fight our cases in a way that builds a, that builds a movement. Speak that, class. Oh, I'm, I, uh, so anyway, so because um, I when I uh, was in touch with Sandra earlier.